In this video, I'm going to show you a little bit about how to use Google Slides in the classroom uh, using Pear Deck. In order to start the lesson that I've already set up with Pear Deck, I'm going to go ahead and hit Start Lesson. And it gives me two options, Instructor Paste or Student Paste Activity. For today, I'd like to show you the Instructor Paste Activity. In my second window, I have what would be the student's screen. So I'm going to keep the teacher view open and the student view open at the same time. For students to get into the um, Pear Deck slides, they can either go to joinpd.com or you can copy a link and send it to them they're an email or Google Classroom, something like that. And they don't have to type in this code because it's already embedded for them. So once I finish typing in the code, it will automatically load. This is a bit of a check in for students, see how they're feeling. And they can have the option to skip that if they'd like. On the teacher view, I now see that I have one student connected and I will go ahead and start class. Uh, my view shows the same thing that the students see. And the students don't have the option in the instructor paste mode to go back and forth between slides. That is completely the control of the instructor. So when I hit for the next slide, it will automatically come up on the student's screen. They didn't have to click anything. Um, here, we have a little bit of a, an agenda of what this video is going to be about. Google Slides is a great way to have some interactivity between you and your students. And uh, Pear Deck and Nearpod are both great tools to um, help build that interaction. Now I've gone to the next slide and this one has an embedded question in it. Um, on the student view, make this window a little bit bigger so that you can see. It still has the slide, but it also has a box on the side where you can answer your questions. So this is an open-ended question and response. Um, I will give, I use Google Slides for assessments. I could add another response if I choose. Um, and on the teacher view, I see that I have one of one responses. I can show the responses. This would show up on like my Apple TV or my projector. And I can show this students still see their version. And the nice thing is it's pretty much real time. So if students add to this, um, like presentations, it shows up on the projected version as well. Um, no students' names show up on the projected version, but if I did want to see the responses, um, I could open it in an another window. and take a look at who is saying what. Um, those are premium features. Right now I have a premium version because it was free for so many days, but in the free version, these two options would not be available. So I will go ahead and move to this to the next slide. Um, Pear Deck and Nearpod are two very similar tools and I'll go through some of the differences towards the end of this um, video. Google Slides is great for collaboration. Um, students can become familiar in making their own Google Slides, and I've used it before in having um, a group of students work on the same set of slides together. It really teaches about um, teamwork and collaboration, critical thinking, they have to decide how they're going to set up their slides. 
and they are going to have to decide how to present those slides to the class. Um, so by sharing out the slides within a few people, they get to work together on the same set of slides. Um, that class presentation is one form of assessment. I also have another one where they work individually and have to present to the class. Um, but there are so many other ways that you could use this for both summative and formative assessments. The quick little open-ended question would be a great way to do a formative assessment as you're going along. Um, or you could have Google Slides be something a little bit bigger that they create. Um, I would say with older students, um, maybe like the high school classes want to go a little above and beyond and teach students how to work near pod or pear deck so that when they give a presentation, it would also be interactive for their audience. Google Slides works great with Google Classroom and um, either turning in assignments or making copies for students in Google Classroom is pretty seamless. And then you can also connect with remote learners. I've done a near uh, not Nearpod, but Pear Deck I've done with a group of remote students and I sent them the code or the link in the chat when we did a um, synchronous learning time and they were able to join right in. They could answer questions from their own devices even though they were at home. also included the ISTE standards. If you aren't familiar with these standards about technology, I would highly recommend taking a look at those. Um, there's plenty of resources on their website. So just a few things. This is my own personal hierarchy of levels of using Google Slides. Um, you could always make a Google Slides and just have the students sit and listen. Or you could ask them to engage with the slides by having their own version on their screen, if you, especially if you have one-to-one -one laptops, uh, where they can answer some questions, give you some feedback. You can also have students manipulate the slides, and I have that in a different video. Or you could have them create the slides, where they are in total control. So Pear Deck and Nearpod are kind of the focus of this slide. Um, in this workshop, I would also offer some multiple choice responses. So have you ever used Pear Deck or Nearpod with students? I have used both. I see that I have one response here. And if I project that response, right now I only have one person in here, but it shows um, moving bars to say how many people responded. If the student changes their answer, it automatically changes on the projected one. When I move along, you can see it can offer multiple choices. Um, this one has six options. This one was a number example that I wanted to try. So teach about 100 students in person, maybe 115 if I include remote learners. And it would show up with a bunch of dots depending on the answers that people will give in their responses. Um, so that might be a fun interactive tool depending on if you need a number question. There's also a drawing tool. Um, so students have the option to draw on the slide that you've given. Um, I could take a look see what the students have given. I've only got one option here, but I could scroll through and see 
this draw a tree part was part of the slide, so they can't change that. But this would be great if you had maybe a picture you wanted them to circle or identify different parts. Um, you might want them to draw arrows to make connections between a few different ideas. You might want them to number things or put them in order. And I think there's just a lot of options for this draw tool. Um, you might have to check if this is a premium feature or not. I'm not sure off the top of my head. We'll move along. And then this just tells you a little bit more about how to use the Nearpod and Pear Deck are both add-ons with Google Slides. Um, if you go to add-ons, you can search for either one of those. And you'll see there's a lot of other add-ons that might be helpful for your grade level or subject area. So this is the little sidebar that shows up when I included Pear Deck as an add-on. It um, gives me a few options here, and then I would just select if I wanted an open-ended question. I could choose text if I wanted multiple choice. We did the number tool, we did the draw tool. A few of these I did not include. <clears throat> Nearpod has much um, larger selection when I'm going to embed them, but be warned, some of these are only free for a limited time, and then you would have to pay the premium cost. So this is my presentation. I can hit end when I'm finished. When ending, I can give this a name. So I might say this is Pear Deck 1. And Publish Student Takeaways actually gives uh, me a Google Docs version of the slides and any notes that every student made. Um, might be a little cumbersome depending on how many students you have but it does put it all into a folder so that you have the session, it has a student name, it has the session, and then it has um, each page with the slide and a section of his or her responses, if there was a response to that question. I do believe that gives the student a version as well. I go here. Um, so that I can give the students a version and they can keep those notes for later. So I could share this link with the students. I think it also goes to Google Classroom. It also goes to Google Drive. So again, I used Nearpod for this example. Um, and this end of the session. And it can be found here on add-ons. Mine is already set up, but if you don't have Pear Deck and Nearpod for your options, um, you can go ahead and click Get Add-ons. It will bring up all of the options that Google Slides has. I hope you find a way that um, this information can be useful to you, your students, and your remote learners.